everyone. Thank you for coming today. Uh, we have Yoram Segal. He's a PhD student of Dr. Adar, and he will talk about uh, labeling and measuring body movements with machine learning. Thank you very much. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm going today uh, to try to summarize four years of activities with many students uh, and many lectures. And uh, so I will try to summarize it and to concentrate on the time that I have uh, today. So um, actually, what uh, I suppose to have is the ability uh, we're going, uh, our objective in this research is to try to take uh, someone to make some body movement in front, in front of a device. And the device, uh, with that device, uh, they should uh, be able to see the movement that is needed and to get a response or feedback how well they are doing their movement. And this is to summarize all the activity. In order to perform a human body pose estimation, there are a bunch of software that has the ability to extract key points from a body into a, a vector to summarize uh, it. And there are some software that can do it with as a skeleton or as a contour or even as a 3D avatar. Uh, and in my research, we're going to uh, use those uh, activities. What we have actually, there are many, many work around the world that people really with a lot of activity. They today, for example, there are people that try to label movement, whether it's standing or kickbox. There is ergonomics where we measure if someone is sitting well or not. There are all gym activities and to measure whether it's out, outdoor or indoor activities. We have some uh, movement, you know, all the sign language. Um, uh, ability to translate it, or even we have gesture activation, so we can just with our body language to control the device. Um, another thing is sentiment analysis, where we have the ability to measure the face, how we react to uh, many, many uh, different phenomena. And of course, choreography, dancing, and all that stuff around it. The challenge in this type of activity actually is to, for example, we have a skeleton here, but where the skeleton is start and where it's ending, all the movement here is very synchronized. Another thing is when it's a crowded environment, so there are many, many skeletons, and some of them are covering each other, and some of them are missing uh, data, and even there is shadows, or when we have some situation where the, uh, the camera is panning and changing and we still need to detect many, many different uh, skeletons. There are some other skeletons like, uh, which are more complicated and those skeletons, and uh, look at the child where he fell down so it's very difficult to see the, these skeletons. So there are many, many uh, challenges. How this concept is working? Actually, there are many ways how to extract a key, a key, a key, a key points, but uh, usually we can use a, a regression neural network that we know we have we know how the body is in the real life, and we know where its key point, what we want to extract, and we can train a regression network. Another concept is that what we have here is a unit where Actually, what we are doing, we are have here an autoencoder, which actually we take the image, we uh, encode it up to the latent vector value, which is the concentrate information about the body. And then we reconstruct it, actually we decode the information into our recent question. And you can see there are a bunch of applications that can do it. Uh, in my research, I used the open pose and media pie particularly, and actually I used even the open CV, which is more fundamental, but it's, uh, for performance. Uh, the, the open pose is the very precise algorithm that has the ability to extract in a very uh, precise position 
but it will it consume a lot of CPU power and uh, resource. Regular computer to translate, to extract one frame can take uh, half a minute or minute for one frame. Unlike that, we have the media pipe, which is much faster. Uh, it can run on a mobile phone, uh, and but the price is it's less accurate. So, and there is in between, and I have developed some application to convert from open pose to media pipe and how to uh, enlarge and to do such things. Okay, so now we have the skeleton. Then some research came, researchers came with the idea of the TSSI. TSSI is a concept where, okay, we know the key, the key point on the body, but how do we go in, to organize those key points. So they offer to organize the key points in a, in a tree structure. This tree structure keep the relationship of the body parts because if, you know, when I move my hand, the, uh, the elbow will move with it and my sh shoulder will uh, react to it accordingly. So in this structure, we keep the, the body uh, how it's, uh, the relationship with the key frame in the key points. So what at the end of the day, what we have here, we have a, a key points which contain the two coordinate, the Cartesian coordinate for the X and the Y. So we have the location, but there is something else which is very, very interesting. This is the confidence level. Look, when I'm standing in the front of the camera, you can see both of my shadows. And when you look on my shoulder, uh, it's very easy to detect them. But when I'm in the profile to the camera, then this sh shoulder is very easy to detect. But this one, the confidence level is poor, and then we have a low probability. So we have three dimension information. But here, look, this is a skeleton from open pose. By the way, here it was from the open CV. You will see it's different uh, way. So what we are doing, actually, we reorganize the key points. And because we want to keep the structure, some key points going to be uh, appear more than once. So that's why we start with 25 key points and we finalize with 49 uh, key points. So for each key point, we have the X, and why and the confidence level. So actually you got a table which describes the skeleton. Now, uh, but we are dealing with video stream. Video stream contains with many frames. So every frame is another uh, tensor. So at the end of the day, I have a line of this for per first frame, I have the X coordinate, the X component, the Y component and the C component. Then from frame number two, I have the second X, the second Y and the second. So at the end of the day, I get uh, uh, a tensor. Uh, I, so if I summarize, I get at the end of the day, uh, I get something like a picture because I have the X and the Y. So I have a matrix for all the X frames and all the Y frame and my innovation, this is my new concept in this uh, research, I add the C, okay? That means because I'm using the confidence level as the third dimension. So now, actually, I can take the X, Y, and C and to, it, to put it and to treat it as an image, as an RGB image, as a color image, like the cat, we have three channels, so we have three channels. And this point, actually, what we get, we get the matrix of the X, the matrix of the Y, and the matrix of the confidence. And then when we present the picture, the, T, the, the TSSCI got a picture, we got an image. But what's unique about that image? This image with one frame describes the whole process of the movement from zero, let's say, to 10 seconds. So at the end of the day, you can see so each line here is another uh, frame of the skeleton. So we can get, when we extract the, the, the skeleton, we can get back the animated image. So with this concept in our mind, what next? This is the most important part of my uh, PhD concept, because now, 
Look, I have here an image that contains, let's assume, push up. Let's now, actually, if you remember, we have a bunch of algorithms that knows how to treat images. For example, we know how to take a dog and to classify whether it's a dog or a cat or whatever, because there is an object here and we teach the, the network how to detect it. So in my case, I have a super object. I have this image contain an object which actually describes, let's say, Pusha. What is so nice about it that the CNN has the ability to deal with the same object in different situations, you know, like when you're using augmentation or stuff like that. So if we take this example, both of them are the same dog, but this is half of the size. What is the meaning here? Meaning at the beginning, the person didn't done the push up, but then when he reached to the middle, he done very, very fast. So in each of, that, of, of those, we have ability to to explain movement as a super object. So the basic concept in this research is just to take the camera, take a shot of the movement, extract the skeleton, and then create the DSSCI. This is only a matter of how to organize that. It's a very, very fast operation. Then we feed it, feed it the images into a, typically it's a CNN a neural network because it's work very well with images. So, and at the end of the day, we got here the latent. The latent actually is the description, the shortest description of our research question. In my case, what is the movement? What type of movement I have here? So actually here, I have a, the short description of a push-up. Or in other words, when I teach students and I tell them about this, I call it the mixed facet of the data. So if the image is the raspberry juice, then uh, the latent is only the mixed facet of the data. It's the juice concentrate of the data. So now I believe that you know who is mixed facet. Yes, now you have the answer. <laughs> and um, so if we take, there are many, many, a different network there out there that has the ability to deal with images. Now, if we take them and we feed them with the TSSCI, we can gain a lot, a lot of application, a lot of uh, data. So, for example, uh, if we take the efficient net, the efficient net, which is a Google uh, CNN neural network, which is very fast network, and we can classify different movements because this network know how to classify between dog and cat or whatever. Another example, if we take a uh, super resolution, we have algorithm like the, that one here, and uh, with super resolution, we take a poor quality image and we enrich the data. We, we add more pixel to the information. In my case, when we enrich the data, actually, I have a movement which is with a low frame rate, and now it's very high frame rate with this concept. Another one, there are many here, but that, let's take the last one as an example. Uh, the transfers, the transfer the style of the image, the NST. What we are doing there, actually, we transfer, we you know, we, can, we take a person that uh, wear one clothes, we take a lady with another clothes, and we can combine between the girl and the clothes of the man. Okay, we can make some style transfer, uh, transformation. In this concept, we can take a ballerina, a lady that is dancing some ballet, okay, and we can make that she will dance the same dance, ballet dance, but in a hip hop style. Okay, with the same concept of algorithm. And there are many more applications that can be done. So what actually we, I have done in my uh, research with many, many students that helped me to do it. And some of them are here. So actually, first of all, we create, because we got a, a fund from, uh, um, we got some fund to work on the physiotherapy uh, action and we, we make a research with the Czech Republic for, with the students from Prague uh, University. So they brought all the fun of the uh, therapist and we, my job was all the problem with the neural network. So they, they gave us uh, some exercise that were well selected 
uh, actually it's a six uh, exercise where this one right and left with 100 students participate in that, uh, and uh, we convert it to a TSSPI. So actually, we had a group from Czech Republic that they create for us the training in a control environment, in a laboratory, you see the camera is in the stand and they, everything is well, well controlled. And there is another group that made it at the home environment. You can see the student here, he is doing it, uh, he's performing the uh, exercise, but look how his leg is covered because he's not aware of the situation. This is a home uh, uh, environment. And this is the expert, and both of them are trying to do uh, the best that they can uh, the movements. So we had some challenges to organize, and because the time is short, so I will run a little bit faster. And uh, at the end of the day, we got a data set which contained different exercises. All of them we extract to skeleton, and then we convert it to TSSPI. Now, here's a very interesting situation. Uh, actually, to, if to admit, when I start my research and I work, the concept was great, but nothing more. It didn't work. I tried and tried and, and couldn't figure out why it's not working. And many students, uh, especially on the first year that they worked with me, they suffer a lot because the uh, idea is great, but nothing will work. So we had to invent the wheel and a lot of problems we had. But then I looked why, what was the problem. And then I figured out that my TSSCI images are very, very small. Small images, 49 or 49 pixels, that's all. And uh, every time when I use the uh, uh, network, I need to uh, enlarge, to expand the image in order to use uh, uh, some network outside there, like with 200 or 200 or even bigger. So I understand that I add some noise to the, uh, uh, to the data. So then I went to chat GPT and I typed, do you know a network that has the ability to work with small images? And he suggested to me to try the uh, efficientness of uh, mobile from Google. And this gave me imagine, uh, imagine results. And it's like the sky has been open for me and everything starts to work for me. Uh, and the best, uh, and it's, first of all, it can work with uh, lot, uh, not much uh, of a uh, neuron and layer. We can do it and then it can be easy to implement it. So now, I have uh, uh, the expert and I have the, uh, the patient, which is my student. Now I feed them in a, what we call Siam neural network, which is basically the, both of them are the same. So we get the image, we convert it to this TSCI, and then we got here the Latin, the mixed pattern, yes? So we have here a vector and we have here another vector, and then we measure the distance between those two vectors, and if the distance is very, very uh, short, that means they are doing the same uh, exercise or the score is good. And if the distance is far, then the score, the score is not that good. <laughs> so with this idea, we measure and we compare. So here is the results for, from the, what I have done on the group from the Czech Republic. And actually what you can do here, you can see I push, uh, for example, the TRO exercise, and we see that all the distance that there was a threshold there, yes, if it's above a threshold or a low threshold, then it's a good, it's the same exercise or it's different because I had a problem, I didn't have patients. I have only students that are, uh, okay. So actually, so here I can find that all the training were, when I put TRO, it, the, the reference was the TRO, so it was exactly, classified, so it was very nice. Of course, with the Israeli students, it was a little bit more complicated. So again, on the diagonal, we can see better results. Most, most of the results we fake there, but as you can see, we have some problems. And the main reason is because our data was, uh, we didn't have enough uh, data, but the principle was what's important. With this in mind, let's go to the next level. If we can, we know now that we can take a DSSI and to extract the Latin. Now, what we have done, uh, we use the distance. This means a way to reduce high dimension into low dimension, like principal component analysis, but with some machine learning, some powerful uh, ability. 
So here the latex is about uh, 500. This is approximately our uh, the vector dimension. This is how we describe the, the, our movement. So what we have done actually, we put all our uh, images and then we create the latent vector, we reduce it to a two dimension and the two dimension we present it on a, on a graph, on a, on a visual graph. And what was amazing, how well the group are separated. So each group here, it's a different exercise and it's so well separated. So it shows us why it's so powerful, this concept of super object on, on a, a movement. And so now, let me so I, I, I of course, and I, but please, I think I should feel afraid of my time. Sorry. Um, so, what I'm now trying, I'm now trying to go to the next level. Let's try to merge exercise. So, let's remember each dot here actually, it's a, it's a TSSCI image, it's an object. Yes, it's, it's a dot because it's a vector, it's a Latin vector. I reduce it to a two dimension. In the real life, it's 500 dimension. I can't see it, but here we can see it. So, what I'm doing actually, so I'm picking one TSSI image, and this is actually one vector. So, now I have a movement. This is describing this movement. Now, what I can do, I can take another. A movement, which is the LFC, which is another dot. So I have, if you remember for linear algebra, every dot is a vector, every vector is a dot. So if we have here two uh, vectors, we can make the average between those two uh, dots. So this is a new virtual TSCI image. It's a new, it's not exist. It's a fake movement. So now what happened is that I want to remind you, here I have a Latin vector. You remember the Latin vector is sitting here in the, uh, in the unit. So now I can reconstruct the Latin vector back to its original skeleton. So what's happened here is if you see it, I'm taking this fake movement and now look what's happened here. So I have here the sitting and, and he's throwing the leg back as well. Look, so we have sitting and leg back. Sitting and leg. So it's a combination of two different movements. Okay, with this, when we keep this in our mind, let's go to the next level. Now let's try to create fake movement, but now I want to define one of those six movements. I don't want something in the middle, I want one of them. So what we have done, we are using the variation autoencoder. Again, I want to emphasize all the network, it's not my uh, algorithm, it exists. All the concepts here that I'm using existing network, the only thing that's different from the existing one is that I take them, I make transfer learning, I keep some layers, only the last layer I might change in order to fit to my research question. So, what we have now, if we take a regular autoencoder, if you remember, I take the picture and then I have the latent level and then I reconstruct it. Actually, in, in our mind, what we have done in this process is to separate group because we want to say this is exercise one, this is exercise two, so we have a separation. Now, if I want to create some dot, you know, there is empty space here. So if I would be just a, a simple dot, I can get garbage, nothing, because no one says that the empty dot here is actually a movement, it can be something else. So I need to pick a dot exactly in the group here if I want to reconstruct it, some, to create some fake uh, new movement. So what I'm doing, uh, I'm going to the next phase, it's what we call uh, the KL distance. What I'm trying to do, I'm trying, look, I cannot generate a distribution that looks like this. No one knows how to do it. There is no way to create a distribution like this. But luckily to us, we know how to generate, how to generate a normal distribution. Normal distribution, it's like a ball in a hyperspace. Yes, it's in an N dimension. We have a, a ball with the radius of one, you know, the variation one, and the mean in the zero. So, what we can do, we can measure and we can force the, the network 
to try to change the, the average and the, uh, the variation the variant uh, into uh, zero and one. So what at the end of the day we are doing, we combine between those two. For one hand, we want to keep the separation. For one other hand, we want the ball in the two M because in this ball, it's fully, uh, um, uh, what you call, it, it's fully um, smooth. So every dot exists. Here, we have some holes in that. But from other hand, here, everything is mixed up and we cannot uh, separate between the different movements. So when we make a loss function that we call an elbow, in the elbow, we combine between the MSC and the KL distance with the beta because we can control what we want to keep, whether we want more separation or more uh, uh, continuity in, the, in our uh, Latin domain. So at the end of the day, now we have a network that has been trained to do something like this. And you see it's something in between this ball and between those separation groups. And now I can draw one sample in the normal distribution, that's I know how to do it. And now I have a latent vector, an arbitrary, and then it can be reproduced, it can be decoded into a TSSCI. And now I got here the AFR movement, which is the same movement as the other students done, but it's a whole fake movement. There is, it's like a new person. It's another person that doing my, uh, my thing. So in order to prove that this uh, algorithm is working work very nice, what actually uh, we, uh, we build um, a score measurement, a way to measure how well someone is doing. So, you know, distance is from zero to infinite, the distance can be. So we are we have some problem with that. So actually we want when the distance is short, so it's the same movement. So we want 100, and when the distance is very far, we want to call it to the zero. So we make it upside down, and we make a cutoff. So if the distance is above the threshold, we say okay, this is zero. It's a far. This, there is no meaning in, in whether it's 100 or uh, whether it's 5,000 or 10,000. It's not important. So we build the score, and then. We start to take the students and with the twin siams, we move them. And here we put all the movement and we compare them to all the reference of the expert. And as you can see, again, on the diagonal, we got the highest score. This is for the student. Look, we have some problem here. You see that the uh, LBE, is not well separated. We have some problem there. Uh, we think one of the reasons is because of the uh, profile that it has been taken and it's look like other. And if you look, you can see some uh, things that are similar between those movements. And of course, it's a matter of how if we get more students, we might get better results. But what is more important, we talk now the synthetic, synthetic a movement that we create in the variation autoencoder. And again, instead of the student, we push it to the network. And first of all, but look how similar the, the confusion matrix look on both of them. It looks almost the same. So it gave us the, the feeling that we are doing something correctly. Uh, because here it's confused and here it's confused. So this is proof that our new uh, movement uh, is actually very, very similar to what we expect. So what practical application? So I put in some logo that you can use. It's not that they are using it. It's my offer, you know, maybe they will now come and give me a million dollars and we will sell it to them. But uh, so for example, for the NBA, we can use this concept in order to train someone how to throw a basketball, yes, okay? So we can measure how well he's doing it and so on. Another thing is for horse racing. And here it's more interesting because we combine between uh, 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 the horse and the person and we can uh, train the network to detect not skeleton only of people, but as well on animals. And for example, for Pfizer, uh, if they want to create a new shop, another shop, for them so they can, and they can measure how the mouse are treated. Another application for mobile eye or there's someone is working here in mobile eye. 
So uh, I put a BMW uh, to see if someone is falling asleep while he's driving his car or whether he's sitting in a control room and looking on his screen and he's falling asleep. So uh, we measure the eye blinking again when we have super object of the blinking. We know how a regular person blinks. This is one movement. And when someone is falling asleep, it's another movement. Here we have some I did for Meta, you know, for Facebook, you know, the metaverse world. So here we can translate movement from a person into avatar, and then we can copy it. And again, the idea here, if you remember, is to, to create the TSSCI and then reconstruct it back, but this time as uh, this uh, results. Um, some uh, other application for TikTok, you know, they measure how well two people are dancing. Uh, uh, facial expression analysis, whether you are happy or sad, uh, look how uh, nice you can do it. Xbox, you know, all the games and some 3D look uh, we can measure, you know, here you see the distance from the screen, okay? And here it's written exactly how we measure, not me, it's, uh, this is an idea how uh, we can uh, do it. And but now we have some our students that done then done some things, and one of them we supposed to know. <laughs> so in the preliminary, they suffer a lot from me because then the, all the TSSCI concept was not that defined at that time. So uh, one group, then the sentiment analysis, look happiness or whether it's in a natural and look the confidence level of from the system, and everything is based on that concept. Another thing is uh, microphone without microphone, lips reading. Okay, so then we are not listening to the voice and uh, we just read the lips and we can uh, do it. Oh, another example here is every word we can uh, detect and to examine. And last word, last example will be, uh, this is a student, oh, you know, when we work in therapy, uh, small children have a uh, ability to cooperate with their treatment and it's very difficult to convince them to work. So here we create a game, okay? Uh, and the coins appear according to pre predefined, according to the expert, what he expects. And we can define which part of the body should touch which part of the, uh, and so we create a game in order to encourage the little child to perform his physiotherapy, uh, what he needs uh, to do. So to conclude this uh, lecture, uh, I would say uh, I will introduce the TSSCI as an image which introduces uh, the super object in which is contained, and now we can contain things in time. By the way, uh, it's not only if you open your mind, this concept actually can be even further go. For example, voice. Okay, if uh, we can describe, we can uh, extract some pitch and we can create from it something in the time in one frame, and then we can create an object. And then, for example, if we have a few people that speak in the audience, we can separate on this concept. Um, what's the most important part is this uh, if the CI concept is that we can use any existing network as long you know we need to make some adjustment. For example, the small size of the image or things like this. But anything that well, it's only depend on your imagination what you can uh, uh, do with this uh, thing. And the idea of uh, fake movement is very important because you know uh, it's very difficult to add some to find the, for our lack. Uh, people that are not uh, that are ill, and it's very difficult to find many people for you know for no one that we need a huge amount of data. So this uh, solution can enlarge our data set. So, uh, so what I can tell you, what is your TSCI? Thank you very much. And by the way, here is a, a whole list of people that in some way contribute to this PhD research along those all the thank you very much. Any questions for we all? Yeah. Uh, I have two questions. Uh, very nice work for this thing and the beginning. Um so I'm to get coming from your lecture. I have to admit, you know, I started from your no, no 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 <laughs> don't be modest. <laughs> um 
So how would you handle separating two different skeletons that are mixed together, such as in the horse example or in the mind? Okay, as I told you, the part of extracting the skeleton is not part of my research. I taking it as a granted, you know, I take it from open pose, I take it from maybe a pipe and I take it from other, and then I'm using it. Um, but the basic idea, they have uh, many algorithms that they deal and um, for example, they are using in Mediapy, they are using the prediction. Uh, what they, why they are doing it so fast? Because they only take snapshots, you know, keyframes. And in between, they are not extracting, they are just making a tracking of the, so they can estimate, even though they are covering or stuff like that, they are doing it. In the open polls, they have some very unique algorithm of the flow of the body. There is a lot of uh, work there, how to measure flow of movement. And then they know that there are different types of flow in, in the time domain, in the, in the temporal domain. And then they can know that this is because it's the arm and the flow, there is a connection here. So they are using this uh, concept there in the open form. And each group is doing something else. But this is not my uh, work. This is, I'm going from next level. Yeah. I see, but do you think that uh, the TSSCI can be applied? Um, so suppose that you have TSSCI representation of two skeletons that were mixed together, say, as in the horse example. Can you do decomposition on the DNA? Yes, of course, because. Always, I will ask you, do you know, do you familiar? And I think that you, you well know, if you have two images, in a, we have a picture with dog and the cat behind it, and you see half of the cat and half of the dog, and full dog or whatever, or the dog behind the tree. And we have the CNN and we have the unit, and we have many uh, uh, networks that has the ability to distinguish between. Because I'm treating this movement, the two skeletons, as two objects, like the dog and the dog, and two dogs. So if the network has the ability to do it with dog and cat, it can do it with push up and uh, something else. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Uh, actually, I have many questions, but uh, <laughs> uh, you mentioned that you can teach how to make the right exercise, or you can distinguish between right and wrong exercise. How do you distinguish that? How do you tag or uh, how do you know which exercise is correct and which is not? Okay, as I told, in my example, I use a reference. I always have an, a, an expert guy who demonstrates how you're supposed to do it. So okay. you pre-train the system of what is a good exercise and whatever not falls in the same kind of pattern, it's a bad exercise, that's the idea. And usually it, it's even more powerful because I'm using the twin siams. The twin siams concept is that you took two identical CNN networks. Mm -hmm. So it's not important what they have been trained. What's important is that both of them, once they will get the same image at the latent space, they will get the same latent vector. It's not important what they've been trained. Of course, you want to train to your problem, then it will be more. So what I'm doing, actually, I'm comparing the two similar uh, CNN networks that create the latent space. And here, I make the comp uh, I compare between them and score them, and then I can tell you whether it's correct or not correct or so. Again, to, to define what is correct, you're still using some kind of pre-trained or redefined correct. Yes, yeah, exactly, exactly, yes, yeah, of course. Yes, I have a dictionary of movement and I'm looking for them and so on. Yeah. So you mentioned that you have the, the unit and you can take a Latin vector and use the decoder to uh, decode the Latin vector into a movement. And you mentioned that you can take two vectors of two different movements and calculate a new different that combine both of them. Yeah. Did you try to decode the difference between Latin vectors between an expert and a student and then you could, the, maybe the unit can recreate the, the exact problems I had in my movements? Very nice, I didn't say, I, I think it's a brilliant idea. <laughs> Very nice idea. Uh... 
I think it's amazing. What he offer, I think it's really very. Did you understand what he said? It, it's amazing. I think it's a very That's good. The next question, I'm sure. <laughs> so I, I really, I think it's a really good idea, and we, we should uh, do it. Uh, whether in, uh, I don't know if we further analysis. Yeah, further analysis. Yeah, but I think it's very interesting. I wanted to ask a different way. I wanted to ask once you know the lecture that what is incorrect, can you pinpoint what is incorrect, which you get the answer. Okay, so this is the answer. Yeah. Exactly. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. Nice work. Thank you. My question is about the you, you utilize the variation of the border problem as a generator, which I know that one of the disadvantages that they, in, if, if when they are applied on images, they generate some kind of blur. So I wonder if you have experienced similar thing. I don't know how it affects the blur in, in the PSSCI map. I wonder if you have experienced something such so Okay, first of all, let me blurring. Uh, the meaning is let's speak about what is a dark image or bright image in the TSCI. Mm -hmm. Dark image, it's meaning that the, uh, the level of the pixel is the amount of movement. Yes. So if it's a dark picture, that means you're making small movement and usually in the corner. Okay. This is because it, it, there's no party. And if you're making a large movement, you know, something like this, it will become a bright image because there are uh, stuff, stuff like that. This is uh, uh, regarding this. Um, I have to tell, to admit, uh, when we work with the variation autoencoder, we start, we had a lot of problem with this blurry. But then what we figure out in the main problem was the difference between the KL and the MC. The, the level between them, it was, at the end of the day, if I remember correct, you remember that we have fixed it? Yes, we work together. Uh, we fix it by, um, I need, you know, the K, I don't remember the right number, but just for the KL was figure about one, zero to one, and the MSC was 1,000 to, and then we had to balance. Once I balance it, I said we succeed to balance it, we got a, a perfect result. And this is, by the way, I advise everybody who is trying to work with the uh, variation autoencoder, first of all, go there and measure, please write the number and see the difference. And then you will know how, how far is the number there. And then you can fix it. And then it's worked very nice. It's a frame break. It's a frame break for all of your things. Okay, it's, uh, as I told you, the frame, I am, you see, the, to create the TSCI, it's meaningless, there's no word there. And now it depends about the open pole, the media pipe, and whatever. And uh, it depends now on your CPU power, okay? Um, I can demonstrate now in my, in my CPU, I have here a GPU, I can work with the open pole that can reach to up to 30 frames per second. With media pipe, you can go with your mobile phone to 30 frames per second. Ma? 60. Now, mobile 60? Okay, I do actually. I, okay, thank you. I know on my computer on on the, my computer with media pipe. Yes, full the, this is the reason for the question. Okay, uh, when you're taking a high frame rate, all those estimation frameworks that we have tested have jitter, very high level of jitter, mm -hmm. meaning two two, two two consequent images will have key points in different space, different places. How can you distinguish between jitter and small movement? Okay, um, to admit. I overrule this problem, <laughs> and I tell you why. Uh, because you know, I want to to prove a proof concept. Okay, I didn't go to a, a specific application. I just want to show this concept. So, in my research, I claim that the movement we don't need a frame rate higher than one frame per second. But why? Because how far you can move. Okay, and for my question, what I have done here. Okay, so that's why my images are very small you know the number of wall is number of frames okay so we, we at the end of the day i finally we fought it for a, a from 3000 frame i used only 50 frames something like this so i didn't go deep in such question of course this is very good uh, issue that we have to keep yes friend. and i wanted to ask about this confidence they mentioned yes uh, so you add this two dimension image and you add this uh, confidence why is it that? I mean, don't understand exactly how is it helping. Ah. If you put there only constant, let's say all the confidence one, then the result are 
No, no, no. Terrible or what? It's giving me the third dimension because as I explained, look. No, when... that I understand. That is a third dimension. Then you can use a well-known algorithm, etc. But no, no. But the, help, help, this, uh, help me with the 3D information because as I told you, when I'm sitting in front of you without that level, my main problem was how to measure things. Okay, this is the distance. But when I'm sitting like this in front of you, this because it's there is no depth. So the distance between the shoulders becomes very short, you know, because it's two-dimensional, it's only something like this. And then the, the data corrupted. We cannot understand it. We have a lot of problems. But once I put at the confidence level, I know that here the confidence level okay. is low. How is it related to confidence? If it's a very smart uh, machine learning, it will still be 100% that no. this is the sole shoulder and 100% that that's the other shoulder. I mean, no, the no, no. The we, we, we saw, we saw. There are a few reasons for low confidence. Of course, if it's a poor quality image and problem like that, it as well can be a, a, a low confidence. But if we took, we have the chef, uh, the group from chef where everything was controlled. And then we could we see how well the depth is defined with the confidence level. And this gives us a lot of information. This gave us the ability to distinguish with different exercise, different movements. So we found a lot of information from our uh, side. I just, uh, I wonder, I mean, maybe something okay. else, if you just replace it with a constant number always. No, we try. The third dimension, and okay. then it's not working, then you can say, okay, it's really adding a lot of uh, Look, information, but. I tell, I tell the one of the works of one of the students I gave him to do exactly what you said, and then he got to he had to do a, a gun network, and he and he tried to produce some movement, and uh, what uh, there uh, we you know in the CNN you have channels, okay you don't need three you can have ten it depends how many kernels you have in the CNN network so this describe how many uh, how many channels. So what we did, like super resolution, we put, uh, we took the six movement, a six channel, and we push it into the network because we expect that the network will generate a lot of movement, and it was disaster. And the, the, maybe and look, maybe someone can do better work. But what we tried, and all the time that we work only with the X and the Y, we got a terrible result. Only. Uh, at the moment that we combine between a few things, we combine with the confidence level when I create it as an image and then I push it into a variety of networks, I succeed to get amazing results from my point of view. I think the reason is because it gave you kind of weight which was missing. The confidence level gives you weight to specific points. Yeah. And that's what the network picks. Yeah. How, and because it, Look, we saw when the confidence in... level of the algorithm, how sure it is that this is the right point. Yes. It's not uh, information about, uh, I don't know, the There is a reason it's why, why it's still, uh... because there is a reason why it's not sure. Look, if it succeeds to detect this shoulder, there's no reason that it will not be able to, to be with the same confidence of that, unless you are sitting like this. So now no, it's very difficult. Something like that, and the algorithm is not good. But if I give you the no. perfect algorithm, it should not. No, no be the perfect good. algorithm has, this can be only as estimate. Here it can be sure. So I tell you, look, I, I'm showing you this point. I'm showing you a very good algorithm. But look, take it. You know, I'm not. Uh, there is uh, no confidence. And you know, in every uh, neural network, when you have classification, at the end of the day, you get a uh, probability how well you got the result. So this is a, a part of the, this, uh, and we used it, and we used it, and we found it as very- No, no, it's working, right? No, <laughs> no, you know- Why, why is that making- I agree, difference? I understand it's a deep question that we have to, we think that found it. Yes. Any more questions? Okay, so let's thank you all again. <laughs> אוקיי, עופר. כל הכבוד, בהצלחה יופי, רמי, היה טוב. אני ממשיך ללמד עכשיו בקורס, בשתיים מתחיל ללמד.
בזום. בזום. עופר, רז מבקש שתשלח לו לינק. אני שולח. מיד. ביי. יופי, בהצלחה להתראות. כן, מה העניינים גבי? שמחתי. כל הכבוד. אמרתי קצת, פניתי בכיוון עם מה, אין לכם מה לעשות. אמרתי, למה? אין. לא היה שם היה בתוכו מה אתה אומר? אני, האמת אתה צודק, גם אני כשאני הגעתי היה ממש... הייתי ב-12, הסתרחתי פה איזה שעה בסוף הצעתי על חוצה. כן, אני אתן לך... רגע, אני אסגור פה את הזום, אסגור את המערכת, אין...